You see, in today's automotive world, if we speak about an, a compact executive uh, offering from a luxury brand, we think of uh, aggressively styled bodywork, uh, an unnecessary plethora of features which maybe you'll never get to use or on the other hand will get outdated pretty quick. A lot of chrome shiny bits, creases on the bodywork, glossy plastic which gets scratched easily all around the interior. And this could describe the current Mercedes A-Class down to a T. But you see, back in the 1990s, Mercedes took a different approach. They addressed a, a popular demand back then the the concept that MPVs were the answer to urban congestions and that everybody will be driving them sooner or later. You see MPVs were the SUVs and crossovers of today's car world. So Benz came up with this sandwich style silhouette, one bread slice too many if you ask me sort of what I've been doing lately. But nevertheless, nevertheless, we digress here. Still, I, this was a cheap attempt at making fun at myself and at the car, really. But the fact of the matter is that I, I kind of really like this look. It's, it's really got something going for it. I don't know if it's the stretch bodywork, the fact that the, the wheels are... Uh, pushed back at either corner of the car or that the headlights go around the bonnet and get stretched. It's got that dynamic look, that going fast while standing still image. And rather contrasting with this look is the fact that the bodywork is lacking any clear uh, creases or hard edges. It's uh, cued in that uh, typical 90s style of uh, bio design, fluid motion, uh, fluidity, elegance and so on. So I don't know, I kind of like it. I can't really express it better than this, but it sort of uh, embodies uh, everything a Mercedes should have been in the 1990s. Its styling is on par with other offerings, but it's uniquely enough to stir the interest of potential buyers. But of course, no self-respecting automotive aspiring YouTuber could review or mention this car without giving a hint to the famous elk test, which almost toppled this car in a safety test and the majorly affected uh, Mercedes-Benz's image. As an immediate precaution, Mercedes-Benz installed a standard electronic stability control in these cars um, in the near future and um, while well, they went on to redesign it, they lengthened the car for uh, an additional, uh, an additional uh, interior space, but really I think it was to uh, an effort to increase stability in, uh, at high speeds. And, uh, well, they did so with the facelift units. This is still a 1997 first launch edition. It sports, and I do use that term loosely, <laughs> a 1.4 cylinder gasoline engine with 80 horsepower on tap and 140 newton meters of torque. It's not fast by any means, yet it's on par with other cars from that era, be they compacts or medium saloons. Uh, I've had a look into it, I can't really test it because it's an old car, but when new, this was supposed to take 14 seconds to accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, and I think that was also affected, that number was also affected by the fact that it has a 5-speed automatic gearbox. Yes, that's right. I don't know why slush boxes would be a, a choice in compact cars from the 1990s. But then again, this is a Mercedes-Benz, a luxury brand, so the auto box might be a 
desirable feature. Well, as you all know, automatic gearbox designs from 30 to 20 years ago were not quite as uh, performance oriented or efficient as today's units. You could count yourself lucky if you had four forward gears and shifting times are best left unmentioned. However, this one, this particular car has a five speed gearbox and I must say it does change rather slowly but if you pinch the acceleration and use the kick down function which I was also impressed by considering it's uh, it's been almost 30 years since this car was designed well it works rather well but we'll get to driving the car in a second Meanwhile, just for the fun of it, let's have a listen to the engine and then we'll go on to the interior. inside things are actually looking quite well there are soft touch soft touch materials uh, typical of mercedes-benz uh, offerings it it feels a bit more premium more upmarket than uh, ford's volkswagens maybe uh, especially renault's and peugeot's but then again there are some scratchy bits and poor fittings Typical of uh, 1990s cars as well. Look, <laughs> have a look at this uh, this little uh, piece of trim that's moving around quite a lot. The steering wheel also is uh, is faded quite badly since it's not leather wrapped or uh, doesn't use any other synthetic material to cover the 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 rubber. So there's a lot of wear and tear due to uh, handling it some scratches are present but actually i've seen cars that are that are a lot worse than this and i also wasn't wasn't really expecting this this quality of interior especially given given that this is not a mint uh, this is not a mint car it's not a minter it's got well it doesn't have huge uh, mileage it's only got 114,000 kilometers that's about 70,000 miles I don't know if the, that odometer is telling the truth or not but the car itself does look to be that age and uh, that way of that wear the fabled automatic transmission is right here in the middle where you'd expect it to be it's got that uh, PR and D setup with the drive having uh, downshifts or kick down function or what have you it's not really a, a highly responsive system but it does somewhat work as I've mentioned the thing that I appreciate more is the headliner which is of a higher quality than uh, sub uh, premium brands it's typical of Mercedes to include these nice features like mirrors in the sun visors, a big uh, lighting system on top of the on top of the cabin to use at night. And well, actually, it's pretty spacious in here. I like the fact that the sills, the door sills, are at the level with the car's floor, inner floor. There is a huge uh, height here and well think about this I'm not sure if you're seeing this but uh, how many batteries could you store in this car theoretically I guess that sandwich style silhouette that I was mentioning before was quite ahead of its time seat uh, seat the driver's seat is 
well it's rather comfortable but a bit of a letdown if you're a more of a heavy set or a, I don't know a bulky person I'm I was a bit chubby and now I'm not I'm not fat I'm just TV fat sort of so my buttocks don't really fit all that good in this seat it's too narrow for me and that's not a joke that that's actually quite true but buttons here because this is a classic um, classic trim uh, that means it's a basic trim for this car one thing I found very strange and I wasn't expecting for this car it uses a French style uh, wiper system uh, this uh, wiper actuator is well it's not a French style but only Renault and maybe Peugeot still use it where uh, the where the wiper actuator is on the left on the signal stock there's nothing here on this side of the uh, on the right side of the steering wheel maybe that was just an option to save up space this interior also has a huge windows huge greenhouse it's uh, got great visibility except in the back where uh, <laughs> there's uh, not two but three headrests which are rather cumbersome and obstruct your view when reversing the mirrors are also quite interestingly low down mounted so you're looking at them like this it's sort of like driving a van but not in a bad way actually i was quite surprised at this i I could have sworn that I was going to laugh and not like this car and yeah given I'm a guy with I'm a car guy but I'm a theoretical car guy so I don't have huge expectations from actual cars still I was quite impressed with this Mercedes there's quality oozing and you get that sense of extra attention to details well in some places not in all but still it's a huge effort and i could see why this car would be a great choice in the sub 1000 euro second hand car market category if there was such a thing really which there is at least in my country because these things are springing up everywhere but before i get lost in details and uh, jump to conclusions let's get to looking at the back and the boot to see what's what there isn't much going on in the back while uh, headroom is ample but not an not as impressive as in the front at least not for adults uh, there's uh, less uh, there's less room for the shoulders uh, I guess the pan of the car goes at an angle and as you go backwards the the flooring is a bit higher so you can really feel that the upside being a child I don't know you can see uh, out uh, the car over the driver's seat and through that huge windshield uh, quality of the materials is okay ish and interestingly enough I couldn't find a place where it differs from the front uh, trims at least on the doors themselves so everything is on par here of course no electric windows for this uh, classic trim level only manual operated um, the seats the front seats don't offer any pockets or any other amenities here uh, and there's not a lot of legroom here nor is there any thigh support and interestingly enough the material of the seats is uh, well either it has worn out or it was soft to begin with but it's there's not enough padding so you don't really sit comfortable in this car however it is very modular so uh well i guess that's a plus uh this car uh, was supposed to have three seats in the back but 
even three children are, are sort of struggling here if they're over seven or eight years old. So there's no real scenario where, where three adults would sit here comfortably and on medium to long runs. Maybe you can cram yourselves uh, five people into this car and drive for five minutes, maybe, but not much else. Trunk space is adequate, excuse my filming gear here. And of course the fact that it's a bit uh, crummy and dirt, it's full of crumbs and dirt because this is a daily used car. Uh, one interesting features, feature of the seats, they do uh, adjust vertically so you could either have a more comfortable position when sitting or you could just have more um, space in the trunk, theoretically. And underneath this floorboard there's a full-size spare wheel with tire. Nice feature to be had, especially since newer cars don't seem to offer that. A lot of pockets and crannies and nooks. Here's the, the original Mercedes-Benz first aid kit. If this were a Ferrari it would cost, I don't know, $2,000 maybe. A bit of pointless mention there. What I do like about these pockets, uh, nooks and crannies, is that they're padded on the inside as well. Uh, lesser brands, uh, non-premium offerings from brands like Ford, Opel and, I don't know, any other French car or Italian from that era, did offer these pockets, but they were not lined. They were in direct contact with the bodywork. <laughs> Well, I guess that's it for the trunk. Nothing really impressive, except the fact that for such a small car, it really is spacious and a nice feature to have for a city car. Moving on. The first generation Mercedes-Benz A-Class automatic. Yeah, typical of old cars. There's a check engine light available <laughs> at your discretion, but there's not really a case of something major, majorly uh, wrong, some catastrophe. Ooh, sorry about that, I'm in reverse. I'll put it in neutral. So there's nothing uh, especially wrong with this car, at least with this engine, at least not at first uh, glance. Though there might be some issues which, frankly, don't really need addressing. So let's easily reverse. I like the creep mode in these automatics. Oop. Now we're going. Easy does it. <laughs> I'm not really used to an automatic. I'm a stick shift guy, mostly. Put it in drive and off we go. I don't know why it's uh, it's um, I don't know why it's uh, jerking, why it's making these jerk movements, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it might there might be something wrong with it with the gear shift unit. I mean, let's just easily sw let's just easily merge into traffic and. Uh, well, I gotta be honest, right from the start, I'm going to say that this will, I will not put too much emphasis on this driving uh, portion of the review. Mostly because this is not a driver's car, but f uh, also because, uh, well, there are some things wrong with it, as is typical with uh, old cars. Yeah, you can hear those squeaks and rattles, but I promise you they're not from anything uh, wrong with the car. This is just the interior uh, trims that are uh, making those noises. There is something wrong, however, with the suspension. The Well, the stability is not affected, so the shocks and uh, the 
the absorbers are okay but there's a huge play in the steering wheel while nothing happens at the wheel itself uh, steering is not communicative and also it's a bit wobbly my guess is um, a combination of old tires and shot suspension so yeah this this type of car you won't you won't be wanting to go on a windy road or a B road or something like that it's not a hill climb it's not an enthusiast car it's nothing of the sort so let's let's leave it at that it is however nice to drive it's got that typical European uh, hatchback demeanor where everything is where it's supposed to be you don't need to force the car to do anything every command and every input is well thought out and gives the gives the desired feedback so it's very relaxing to drive in that regard uh, I don't know what else I could tell you except that maybe we could try the kick down function and see how that works in real time so here we are on a, this is not yet on the highway but we're be, mer, will be merging soon enough okay here we are moving past 3000 rpm the car seems to move a bit but not by much noises are happening beneath the bonnet but yeah things are not happening oh yeah and it's a flea market uh, day today so i haven't really chosen the greatest uh, road for this review but nevertheless let's get to it brakes are okay but uh, nothing spectacular there's drum brakes in the back so that's kind of a letdown but given the size and the weight of this car it's actually not something i would worry about you don't really feel the need for disc brakes and i rail and i rarely say so because i'm not a huge fan of drum brakes tell you what interesting to see this car is very stable given the fact that it was presumably a hazard when launched and the famous L test and so on couple that with the fact that it's actually an old car and a used one at that a well used one at that it's very impressive that it's so stable I mean I've driven cars that take Dacia Duster for example it's way 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 more unstable the first generation Dacia Duster from 2011 and trust me I've driven a couple for an extensive period of time is way more unstable than this Mercedes A-Class and to me at least that's the most impressive thing I can say about this car and I would choose it in a heartbeat were I looking for such a small hatchback it's a, it's a huge point I cannot stress this enough the fact that the car is really stable well given the size and shape I wouldn't recommend it for extreme maneuvers but going 90 kilometers per hour on a straight road with occasional maneuvers to uh, avoid or overtake is quite fine it's better than newer cars as i've pointed out before much better in fact other than that i don't really think i could find anything else i can say about this car sure it's rather uh, fun and quirky and you can, you stand up tall in it and you feel like you're driving a van it's oddly practical i wouldn't recommend it on highway roads because of uh, the age it was designed in and the lack of safety safety features so i guess this car is rather okay it's got a nice enough gearbox 
for an automatic from the 1990s is spacious practical uh, rather nicely built interior given its uh, price point and availability and it offers basic motoring for about 1000 euros so what else would you want unless you're an enthusiast I would say go for one of these little marks Mercedes A-Class first generation a sort of I don't know uh, sluggish attempt at uh, providing you with a fair review I was actually quite impressed with this car I wasn't expecting this level of stability this level of interior of uh, fit and finish and well I kind of like its practical side it was really thought out through and through it wasn't just this one one trick pony Mercedes really wanted to do something practical and to provide uh, a truly mini MPV to the car market however it's not a true cars car guys car it's it's got that quirky factor but not by much it's not impressive in features it's not really strangely designed it's just well thought out and excessively so in typical German fashion uh, if you're looking for a cheap motoring solution then by all means this car I think it it, it is just that it's not for enthusiasts and it's not for collectors and it's not for people liking strange cars if however you find a good example you could get a few years of basic motoring out of this uh, out of a vehicle such as this and for that I truly recommend it so I guess that's it see you in my next installment bye